Hi, this is Sudeep and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. Today, we will continue on the problem that we had started last week. But before we go forward, please to take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel and to join us in this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. Before we go ahead with the contents that are supposed to be discussed today, let us do a quick recap on what we had done last week. Last week, we had taken this problem of a statically determinate beam pinned at node number one and having a roller support at node number two, being subjected to two point loads, one, a vertical point load of 60 kips, and secondly, an inclined point load of 60 kips, which was inclined at the slope that is given. The beam is of a span of 18 feet. Now, we had solved for the reactions of this beam using the equations of equilibrium. The vertical reaction at node number one came out as 56 kips. The vertical reaction at node number two came out as 52 kips. And the horizontal reaction that came out at node number one was 36 kips. We had also modeled the structure in STAT Pro using the necessary dimensions, and we had defined the point loads in load case number one with vertical point load of 60 feet at node number three and an inclined point load of 60 kip at node number four. However, we made a big mistake when we had done the modeling. So to show that, let us go back to properties and the properties that we have defined. If you go in there, you'd see that we had defined a rectangular section of 16 feet by 10 feet, which is huge, right? So we intended to do <coughs> to define a rectangular section of 10 inch by 16 inch. But instead of that, we defined that as 10 feet by 60 feet. So we need to change the dimension. So this gives us a good, good opportunity to show you uh, how you can go ahead and change uh, when you find that you have made a mistake in the modeling. So in this case, let us click on the inch option and click on apply and ensure that the units are now defined in inches. Double click on this and we go there and define the depth as 16 inch and the width as 10 inch and we say change and we say close. Now that we have closed this, now our model is ready for analysis and design. So we go ahead and run the analysis. Now, once we have finished running the analysis, we need to go into the post-processing mode to check for all the results. So we click on the post-processing option, click on apply and OK and get into the post-processing mode. As a good engineer, the first thing that we would need to check is if the equilibrium check has been satisfied. So if we go into this option here and see the statics check table, we find that all the loads and reactions are equal and opposite to each other. Then the row called the difference is zero, which means that that is the loads are loads and reactions are equal and opposite to each other. So that would mean that the structure is in equilibrium. The next thing that we need to check is the displacement summary. So we can go to the summary and see that the maximum vertical displacement that we get out of that load is 1.5 or 1.6 inches, which is small enough and which means that the structure is in equilibrium. But the deflection, sum, the deflection profile looks to be huge. This is because of um, the scale settings. So we can quickly go and change the scales for the displacement. So what we can do is go into the scales option and then click on apply immediately and just say that the displacement, we increase this value so that the scales are adjusted. Okay, so now this is the displacement profile that we get. But we are sure that the structure is in equilibrium. Now, the next thing that we'll do is to check for the reactions of this structure. 
So we click on the Reactions tab again. Now remember that in the Reactions tab, the bottom table was that of Statics Check, right? And the top table would give you the support reaction. The support reactions are also displayed in this small box here. And um, so we can look at the support reaction either by looking at this box on the figure or from this table. However, in complicated structures where there are a lot of supports and a lot of members in it, it is not really easy to see this the, the values in these boxes as all of these are jumbled up. In those cases, the only thing would be to look at the support reaction table. So we would continue even in this problem to look into the support reaction table and we will sort of try and make meaning out of the values that are given uh, in this support reaction table. What do they mean, right? So that is what we are going to check in a while. So what we have here is this particular table here which is uh, the support reaction table, which I had copied from StatPro and have pasted it in this PowerPoint slide. And we have the figure of the beam here uh, without the support so that we can view the reactions clearly. Now let us try and interpret the support reactions that we read out of the table. Remember that for reading the support reaction, you have to refer that against the global access system. Okay, so what we now do is let us see the reaction, the FX reaction at node number one is 36 positive. Now, FX means the load is applied in the global X direction. It's not the load, but it's the reaction that is in the global X direction. Plus 36, a value of plus 36 it would mean that it's applied along the positive direction of the global x-axis. So the horizontal reaction or the reaction along the x-axis at node number one would be 36 skips like this. Then we have for node number one, the vertical reaction or the FY reaction, which is the reaction in the global y-axis as 56 skips. Now, Global y-axis, as we can refer to this particular figure here, it is vertical. So we have if the vertical reaction acting along the positive direction of the global y-axis, which is upwards. And the magnitude of that reaction is 56 skips like this. Similarly, for node number two, the vertical reaction is given to be 52 skips, which would mean that the load would act in the upward direction along the positive direction of the global y-axis like this. So we have now interpreted the reaction results from the reaction table. And if we compare that with our hand calculated results from the calculations which we had solved using the equations of equilibrium, we can see that the results from StatPro are exactly matching the hand calculated results both in magnitude and in direction. Finally, we want to see how the equilibrium check has been done. Right? We already had referred to this statics check table and how we saw that the applied load was equal and opposite to the reaction loads. But how did we get those particular values is what we want to see in this discussion. So if we <clears throat> see what is the applied force in the ZX, ZX direction, the global X direction, it is this fan, this, uh, this force, which is of 36 skips and acting along the negative direction of the global X axis. So the applied load along the global X direction is minus 36 with it being acting in the negative direction of the global X axis. Now, what are the reactive load? Or what is the reactive load in the global x direction? Well, the reaction uh, is given by the reaction at the horizontal reaction at node number one of 36 skips, and it is acting along the positive direction of the global x axis, and thus it is 36 plus 36 skips, which would mean that the applied force in the global x direction is equal and opposite to the reaction force 
to the global x direction. Next, what is the applied force in the global y direction? Well, the applied force in the global y direction would be given by the 60 kips, which is at acting along the negative direction of the global y axis. And then we also have this particular load of 48 kips, which again is acting in the negative direction of the global y axis. And thus, the, the sum would be minus 66, minus 60 kips and minus 48 kips, minus because they are acting along the negative direction of the global y axis. And thus, we have a total of minus 108 kips as the applied force along the global y direction. Again, the reaction force in the global y direction would be given by the vertical reaction at node number one and the vertical reaction at the node number two, and both of them are acting along the positive direction of the global y axis. So we'll have 56 kips plus 52 kips. Both these values are positive because they are acting along the positive direction of the global y axis, and the sum is 108 kips. Again, we see that the applied force in the global y direction and the reaction force in the global y direction are equal and opposite. Finally, we'll talk about the applied moment about the global z direction. The applied, now remember that if the global x and global y is as shown in the figure, the global z is coming out of the page towards you. So the moment, the applied moment of the global z direction would be given by the moment of this load from the global origin, which is 60 kips into 6 feet. And then the moment about this load, which is 48 kips, the distance of it from uh, the center of the origin is 12 feet. So 48 into 12. And both of them are causing rotation opposite to the curl of the fingers if we are to hold the right hand uh, in such a way that the thumb would point out of the page towards us, then it would mean that any clockwise moment would be positive. However, both 60 kips and 48 kips vertical load are creating a negative uh, or a clockwise rotation, and thus they would have a negative moment. So we have minus 16 to 6 and minus 48 into 12, which is minus 936 kip fit. Now, the reaction moment about the global z direction about the center of the origin would be given by the, this reaction force, which would cause an anti-clockwise rotation about the global origin. Thus, the value would be positive. The distance of this force from the origin is 18 feet, and thus we have the moment as 52 into 18 plus. That is, it would be a positive value plus 936 kip feet. Again, the applied moment about the global z direction, the reaction moment about the global z direction are equal and opposite. And thus the statics check are in, the equilibrium check is satisfied. Now let us check the values, our hand calculated values versus the values given in the table. So the, the applied force in the global z is global x direction is minus 36 kips. It is given as minus 36 kips in the table. The reaction force in the the global x direction is plus 36 kips and we all have also found it to be plus 36 kips. The applied force in the global y direction is given as minus 108 kips and we also have minus 108 kips. The reaction force in the global y direction is given as plus 108 kips and we too have found it to be plus 108 kips. The applied moment about global z is given as minus 936 kip feet. We too have found it to be minus 936 kip feet. And finally, the reaction moment about the global z axis is given as plus 936 kip feet. And we also have found that to be 936 kip feet. So we have verified how the calculation in the statics check table has been done. I hope you have understood this. In the next session, we will take up another structural mechanics problem and solve for the reactions. I hope you have enjoyed the session today. If you have, please do hit the like button. And if you have any questions, please do ask them in the comment section below. I hope to see you in the next session. Till then, 